uh, welcome to those who are joining us online and uh, through video and we'll continue singing together our God is greater our God is stronger and we believe he is he is mighty with us and strong with us so Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Our God. Our God. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, none like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, and if our God is for us, then who can ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God. Our God. Amen. Well, let me share just a few announcements with you guys. And uh, we're planning to have a board meeting this Tuesday evening and looking forward to getting together. We kind of sit 20 feet apart and start to yell. No, we don't quite do that, but uh, it's good to be able to get together in person now and, uh, and be able to talk talk about uh, some of the things within our church community and family. Also, uh, I've been in contact with uh, Pastor Mark and Ruth, and they're going to be coming and doing a service for us here in August. And so we're looking forward. I can't remember the date, so I should remember that, but I got it written down somewhere, and uh, I might take a week off, take a week of holidays. And so uh, we'll look forward to that, Pastor Mark and Ruth coming and, uh, and sharing with us as well. Well, we're going to continue to sing together, and uh, this is an old song, but a great song that we really like to sing here together. There's a wind of blowing all across the land, fragrant breeze of heaven blowing once again. Don't
There's a rain of pouring in showers from above mercy drops of heaven mercy drops of love turn your face to heaven let the water pour let it pour over me oh Come and pour over me. There's a fire. There's a fire burning. Falling from the sky. Awesome tons of fire. Consuming you and I. Can Burn the sacrifice, let it burn over me. Oh, sweet fire, come and burn over me. Oh. Come and blow over me. Oh, sweet rain, come and pour over me. This song we haven't sang for a little bit, but it's great to. Uh, just kind of be still and quiet in the presence of the Lord and feel His presence and know that He is with us. I like the line on this song, When the oceans rise and the thunder roars, I will soar with you above the storm. Hide me now under Cover me within your mighty hand. When the oceans rise and thunders roll, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are gone. Find rest my soul in Christ alone. Know His path in quietness and trust. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are God. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. For I will be still and know you are God. It's a great song to kind of take us into a time of praying together and praying for those that are Facing challenges and struggles in our in their lives, we just got a message from Noel Costin this morning that her brother Barry had passed away, uh, and uh, she just wanted to extend her thanks for uh, for everyone praying for them and praying for 
Barry and, and, uh, and his wife, and uh, during this time, uh, she said in her message that uh, she was very grateful that Barry had accepted Jesus into his life just a couple of years ago, and so though we're sad at the passing, we know where he is. And uh, so she was grateful that uh, we had been praying for them. And please continue to pray for the family and pray that God would be with them and as they kind of walk through this time and, uh, and uh, yeah, pray for them. Uh, we want to continue to pray for Keith. I know he's been transferred to Alberton Hospital and continue to pray that God would be with him. And Sherry as well is back home. And uh, so we're thankful for that. Uh, Eva sent me a note uh, this morning that uh, uh, Eric McKenna is not doing well, so we want to pray for him and pray for his family. Uh, Eric is uh, Shirley Smallman's brother, and so there are lots of people that we can pray for and lift uh, to God and continue to pray for our families and uh, pray for our church family and our church leaders and, uh, and uh, pray for those who are, who are close to us and also those who are far away. And uh, one of the most powerful tools that we have, I think, as being followers of Jesus is being able to pray and uh, talk to God about situations and circumstances in our lives. So let's spend a little bit of time praying together and talking with the Lord together. Father, we are grateful again for this hope, this promise that we have in you. That Lord, though at some point our life on this earth ends, if we are your children, if we are your people, uh, our life continues in a whole new place, in a situation where you are evident and real and, uh, and totally obvious. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that we have this strong, strong hope in our lives. We do pray for Noelle and for the rest of her family as they kind of walk through these days of grief. May there be a sense of your presence, your comfort, your hope in the midst of that. We know that losing loved ones is never easy. And we pray, Lord, that you would be with them. Would you just surround them, Lord, with your peace and your strength and your hope? We thank you, Lord, that Barry accepted you and is your child. And so we know that he is with you at this time. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for Keith and for Sherry and, and for others, Lord. We pray that you would be with them, we pray for Eric, and Lord, we just lift them to you and ask that you would move in their situation and in their lives. We believe that you are the creator of life and that you can miraculously bring healing to our lives as well. And so, Lord, we ask for your strength, your healing upon them. Lord, there's others who are watching and listening today that... Uh, that are knowing the effects of disease or, or something that, like that in their lives. And Lord, we ask that you would be indeed with them and may your hand of healing fall upon them. We know, God, that your spirit is not bound by time or place. And so, Lord, we pray that you would move in each person's life. Lord, as we come to you with humble hearts, we believe that you move in our situations and circumstances. You are a mighty God, and you are continuing to speak in and through us, and we thank you for that. We thank you for your love. We thank you that that love is so massive that we will never be able to explore the end of it. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you continue to pour into our lives by your presence and by your spirit. We pray this morning that you would continue to be here with us and be with those who are watching and listening. Lord, may there just be this sense of your, your Holy Spirit coming and being, being just in our midst. We need you, Lord. We need your strength, your hope. We need your wisdom in this time of pandemic. And Lord, we thank you that you know what's going on. And Lord, I believe that you are moving in the midst of it. So we thank you for that. We want to allow just a few moments of quiet this morning. Today, as we gather together, Lord, may that sense of your presence be with us as we do that. Lord, may you just invade this moment with your spirit.
Lord, we want to pray together the prayer that you taught the first disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, I hope that you've had a, a good week, and it's been a, another interesting week here on the island, and uh, there's been a few more COVID cases, as I'm sure you've heard from the news, and nice to see the potato fields blossoming, at least they are around our house, and uh, great to see that. The weather, though, it's kind of been cool, and then hot, and then cool, and then hot, uh, depending on the day and depending on the hour, it seems like. Uh, where we used to live in Ontario, um, there was a saying about this, and it was, if you're not happy with the weather, uh, just wait five minutes because it's most likely going to change. And that seems like that's what's happening here today on Prince Edward Island. I was reading a couple of, well, I guess what I think of as dad jokes. And uh, these dad jokes are kind of funny, and, uh, and you guys kind of know what I'm talking about when I say that. Uh, we think they're funny, but usually our wives and kids just kind of roll their eyes when we tell them. But personally, I think that dad jokes are good for the soul. I do. They're good for the soul. Well, these, these dad jokes I'm going to share with you this morning... Uh, kind of make a statement and then turn it into kind of a surprising different direction. So let, uh, let, me, let me illustrate what I mean. Here's the first one. It says, to keep fit, I have taken up quiet tennis. It's like regular tennis, but without the racket. That's a dad joke. That is a dad joke. See? Okay, it's a bit corny, and I admit that. But here's another one. Apparently... I snore so loudly that I scare everyone in the car that I'm driving. <laughs> Quite true. It's a funny, but I wouldn't want to be in that car. Well, there's a Bible verse that I talked about in one of my devotionals this week that kind of does the same thing as these dad jokes. The second part of the verse changes or kind of dramatically expands the meaning of the first part. It has got me thinking about what Jesus was actually trying to communicate in this very powerful and maybe radical verse. I'd like to explore it and unpack these words of Jesus. So if you have your Bibles with you, you're welcome to turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. And this section of the account of Jesus' life was written by or recorded by the disciple Matthew, and it's what we call the Sermon on the Mount. And it's recognized by those who study the Bible as kind of the foundation of Jesus' teaching. This was a significant sermon in his life, and Jesus used it to teach his disciples and the crowd that followed him about who God is and how he wants us to live. And because eyewitnesses were there to hear it and experience it, we have it recorded for us to read and learn from as well. The bottom line of this is that if you want to know what Jesus is all about, read the Sermon on the Mount. This is really where, it taught, where he explains what he, uh, he believes and what he is. So at the end of Matthew chapter 5, and partway through this powerful message, Jesus says these words. He says, be perfect, be perfect. I'm thinking he meant this as stronger than a suggestion, closer to a command, be perfect. Well, if I asked you, are you perfect? When I look in the mirror, and that may not be the first words that come to mind, 
My wife, on the other hand, she is perfect. And she's not even here to hear me say that. Okay. But as I mentioned in my devotional on Thursday, that word perfect has a different meaning than we think. It does not mean being dressed flawlessly so there's no wrinkles showing or making sure that no hair is out of its proper place or having your shoes shined and polished to a spit shine like a well-dressed soldier. This is not what this word means when it was originally written down. Instead, what it actually means is to be well-rounded, to be mature, to be whole, to be complete. You can see this is very different than the way we usually think of the word perfect. So Jesus is saying to be complete, to be mature, to be well-rounded and righteous in the way we live. So are you? Are you well-rounded, complete, mature, perfect in the way you live your life and in your relationship with God? Well, as if that standard wasn't high enough, Jesus adds something that totally kind of changes the meaning of what he is saying to us. This is what he says. He says, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Yep, that puts a whole different slant on what Jesus is requiring of us. To be complete or whole or mature and righteous as our Father in heaven, that just takes it to a whole new level. So are you? Are you perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect? Is that even possible? It sets an incredibly high standard. Can you and I ever attain to this and live up to Jesus' instructions? Because sometimes you get to feel like God is setting up a bullseye for us to aim at, and then he gives us a broken bow and arrow. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. But but I don't think Jesus would ask you and me to do something that is totally impossible for us to do or even unlikely for us to experience. Rather, I think he is explaining how to live a rich and full and righteous life as his follower and as a child of God. Sometimes looking at a word and the meaning of a phrase can really change how you see something. In this case, the word be, be perfect. Uh, is worth looking at. And let me explain what I mean. Back in, the wor- back in the day, the word be had an added meaning to what we're thinking about today. And it's almost like Jesus is saying, be being perfect. Be being perfect. I'll try and make this clear. Because Jesus wasn't saying that in a split second we're going to be mature and whole and righteous like God is but rather we are growing into this standard and experience by following God wholeheartedly. Be perfect is both a decision we make and a journey we take. We choose to live right and holy, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, we grow into all God wants us to be as we continue to follow his will and his plan for our lives. This makes sense, doesn't it? Well, can I ask, are you experiencing this in your life right now? Are you living right and holy and empowered by the Holy Spirit so that you can become whole and mature and complete? In the next part of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus went on to explain some practical ways that we can be perfect or complete men and women of God. And if you look back to Matthew chapter 5, just go to the next chapter, Matthew 6, and we're going to read from verses 1 to 8. He talks about three things that we can do and be as we we continue to live out this life. In this Bible section, um, he talks about how we are to live, how we are to give, and how we are to pray. 
So check it out, starting at verse 1 of Matthew chapter 6. It says, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what, you're done, what you've done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you pray, not if, when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what you have done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask. I want to break this down for, for a minute and kind of see how it relates to us. The first is live righteously. As, as a follow-up to his command of being perfect, therefore as your Father is perfect, Jesus talks about living out our righteousness. For me, this takes on, this takes in how I connect with God and also follow his directions, and also how I treat other people. You know, being right with God is something that we cannot do on our own. Some of us have tried it, including me, and failed pretty miserably. It is only, only because of Jesus dying for our sins and cleansing that comes into our hearts and mind through accepting that sacrifice and making it personal in our lives, that we have any hope of living right and whole and perfect before God. But Jesus says here, to be perfect and whole, we have to practice our right living. Not just a show for other people to see, but it has to be real. It has to be real. Can I say that again? It has to be real. It has to be deep. It has to be authentic. I hate to always pick on politicians, but it sure seems like they do things only for show. Like taking a picture in front of a church in the middle of a demonstration. What's with that? Or apologizing for corruption only after you get caught and enough of people get upset about it. Come on, guys, live it out. Do the right thing because it honors God and shows respect to others. Don't fake it just for the sake of putting up a show. Well, can I ask you, is your righteousness real? Is it authentic? If it is, other people will see it in your life. You don't have to put on a show for anyone. They will know the difference if they know, if, as they knew Jesus was different. I'm not saying you get this all at once, because that's certainly not true in my life. Remember, to live right before God is both a decision we make and a journey we take. So the second thing Jesus says here is to care generously and for the right reasons. Jesus says that when you help out those who are vulnerable and need assistance, do it in secret. Wait, does that mean people don't know how kind and generous and godly I am? Well, Teresa and I talk about this sometimes and about how when we give to the church or to someone in need, it's nobody's business but God's. Why is Jesus making this point in the light of his command to be perfect or mature in our desire to be like him? I think it's because God is completely unselfish in how he loves, in how he cares for the world, and how he sent Jesus to die for us when we were rebelling against him and totally ignoring that he was our creator and king. 
To be perfect or complete means we live unselfishly. I'm not saying this is easy, but we live unselfishly. Remember, it's a choice that we make and a journey that we take. Can I ask, how are you doing with that? Well, the third thing is to pray fervently, authentically, and concisely, Jesus says. I've never been the type of person who can pray eloquently and stirring prayers. I've never been that type of person. I may have tried in my past, but usually I end up tripping over my own words as you hear me do sometimes when I'm talking. On the whole, I do not speak easily in public. And the only reason why I'm doing this is because God asked me to and empowers me to do it. So sometimes when I'm praying with other pastors, well, I get a bit intimidated because their prayers sound almost angelic and with the words they say and the passion that they pray them. But as I've grown in my journey with Jesus, he has taught me to pray from my heart, pray from my heart, to be real, to be myself when I talk with him. Even when I'm praying in public, Always talk to him, to him, not for appearance and not for show. If we want to be perfect and whole and mature in our walk with God, then it is him, him, we need to connect with and talk with and listen to and be ourselves with and cultivate a relationship with. And although he's unseen, like the Bible says, it is when we spend time in his presence through prayer that we become more and more like him. I read this a little while ago about some men and women of faith. It goes like this. Jacob was a liar. Peter had a temper. David had an affair. Noah got drunk. Jonah ran away from God. Paul was a murderer. Gideon was insecure. Moriah was a gossip. Mary was a worrier. Thomas was a doubter. Sarah was impatient. Elijah, he was moody. Moses stuttered. Zacchaeus was short. Abraham was old, and Lazarus was dead. And yet the Spirit of God worked with each one of these. He grew their faith. He matured them as they walked with him. They became, they become, became men and women of strong faith and godly lives. To be perfect and complete is a choice we make and a journey we take. God is looking for those who will choose to follow him wholeheartedly and allow his spirit to mold and shape their lives. The question is, what about you? Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you continue to work in our lives. You continue to live in a way that honors you and pleases you. And Jesus, when you said more than 2,000 years ago is to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect, I don't think that was unrealistic, but I think you were calling us to a life of wholeness, maturity, and righteousness. So we live right with you. We live in your presence. We live a life that pleases you and honors you. Lord, we're going to need your help to do that in our everyday lives. We're going to need that. We're going to need your strength, your power, your spirit in us to live that way. So Lord, build it in us. Make us who you want us to be. Even today, we open our hearts to you and ask you to help us to become more and more like you. Fill us with your spirit, Lord. That's what we need. We need your strength and your empowering to be able to live this way. 
Lord, those early Christians were called little Christ. They were representatives of you. And Lord, we know this world desperately needs your presence. And we need to live that way so others may see you in us. So Lord, we open our hearts and lives to you and choose to follow you today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to close by singing a song and it's kind of a prayer and a song at the same time and it's, uh, it just speaks words that as we know God continues to work in our lives. So you're welcome to sing along if you like. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest, and without you, I fall apart, you're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you, every hour I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you, where sin runs deep. Your grace is more, where grace is found, is where you are, and where you are, Lord, I am free, holiness is Christ in me, Lord, I need you, oh. I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need you Lord I need you oh I need you I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to speak and work into our lives. We thank you, Lord, that we are your kids, your children. And we thank you, Father, that you continue to grow us, to mature us, to make us complete and whole and well-rounded. And Lord, we pray that someday we would be as you are, that there would be such a sense of your presence, your spirit in us, that others would know that you are real. We pray your blessing upon all those who are here this morning and pray that you would continue to be with them. We pray your love, your peace upon their lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.